Now let's first of all understand <coughs> what we are trying to do here. We are trying to find out the magnitude and direction of the resultant of two vectors a and b in terms of their magnitudes, in terms of their magnitudes and the angle theta between them. Right? Now let us be very clear about why we require this and how is it different from what we have studied, right? So to find out the resultant of two vectors, resultant of two vectors, of two vectors, we, we have utilized a, a method called, called the graphical method. Now, what does graphical method do? It it uses the the triangle law of addition, triangle law, or or the same thing, right? It, it's not different. It's it's only the way that they are represented is different. The parallelogram law. That, that is the first thing. So, graphical method. Then we found out the analytical method. Which uses the vectors in the rectangular form. Right? Which uses the vectors in uh, the rectangular form. So, so rectangular form. And what is that? What is the rectangular form? Rectangular form is nothing but what we did in the last video. That is, if you have a vector like 2i cap plus 3j cap, and, and you are supposed maybe interested in adding it to 5i cap minus 7j cap. Okay, so, so that gives you actually 7i cap minus 4j cap. This is the rectangular method that, that we did just now in the last video. Now, we have seen that any polar format can be converted into the rectangular form. That means if I know that, that say this is 5 unit in length, like that, and it makes an angle of say 60 degree with the positive direction of x axis, I can very well convert this into, into the rectangular form. And what will that be? That will be 5 cos 60 i cap plus 5 sine 60 j cap. Now, now that is equal to 5 cos 60 is 5 by 2 i cap and this is root 3. So 5 root 3 by 2 j cap. And if you have, say, two such vectors, let us say there is another vector, there is, say, another vector, which is of length, say, 7, and which kind of makes an angle of 30 degree. Okay, so, so if this vector is termed A, if this is vector A, then this vector B can be represented as as what? as 7 into cos 30 i cap plus 7 into sine 30 j cap and cos 30 is root 3 upon 2 i cap plus 7 upon 2 j cap right? And, and once in this format, I can pretty readily add or subtract or do whatever I want to do with these vectors. So that is not a problem. Then why am I trying to devise something that is again different from all of these that we know? 
you'll soon come to know why are we doing that. See what happens in many, many applications. Okay, in many applications, we have the vectors, say a vector A which is like that, okay, and say a vector B which is say like that, okay, and we do not know the orientation of these vectors with respect to the horizontal. So you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say we, we still do not know what angles theta 1 and theta 2 they are making with the horizontal. Okay. However, we are pretty pretty clear about the angle that they make with each other when they are co-initial. That means their tails have come together. Then we know what angle they make. Okay, that is known to us. This this angle maybe is, is say theta. And then I'm trying to sum them up and find out the resultant and what angle that resultant makes with say either of these vectors. Okay. Understand? Many a times you will be operating on just two vectors and many a times this becomes slightly simpler than operating them like this because here you have to find out the orientation. It's not that these orientations cannot be known. They can be known but converting them into the rectangular coordinates then operating them becomes a bit difficult, slightly difficult than doing this. But before I proceed, let me tell you, both of them are going to give you the same, same result. So the discretion at the end of the day is completely yours. And after we have gone through this method, I'll solve a question or two with both the methods. And you'll find that and you find that the answer is, is unique and it should be, right? The answer is absolutely not dependent on the way you approach. The answer is an answer, okay? We will solve it by both methods, find that the answers are the same and, and actually it later becomes your personal choice which method you like to use. But many a times what we are going to discuss right now gives you a better insight into the problem than than the rectangular coordinates. But still this also can be brought in to mean the same thing that, that the other things mean. Right? So that way they are not different, they are just different methods. Right? Now with this I start this. So let there be a vector A and another vector B. Right? So So we have a vector A, which is something like that. This is say a vector A. Okay. Let there be another vector here. Maybe anywhere. Right. Let's do here. different magnitude, different direction to consider the general case. Right. So this B. Fine. There is a, these two vectors are given. They they may also be joint or they may be kind of different places. And still you are trying to find out the 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 resultant. So the first thing that you have to do is to shift this vector. Okay, to shift this vector parallel to itself so that both these vectors become co initial. See that? Okay. 
So I shift this so that both of them become co-initial. And of course, I am given the length of these vectors. So I know the magnitude of A. Okay, so I know the magnitude of A. So I know the length of A, mod A, mod B. The length of B is also known. Now as I told you, specifically the angle that A and B make with the horizontal axis, the, the positive direction of Y axis, that is not known exactly. But one more thing is known and that is the the angle theta right the angle theta theta between these vectors is known right now what happens let me use the parallelogram law of addition Okay, and, and, and what happens is, is this, I just copy it, okay, and, and paste it. And what do I do? I bring its tail right where the right where the head of this line. Right? So it is. It looks something like this. And this extra overhang that I somehow carried. Let me erase that. Right. This is what it is. I also also copy the I also copy the I also copy this vector and try to shift it parallel to itself right so, so I, I copy it I paste it so if I come here then then it is something like this and since these shiftings are absolutely exact right you find that automatically the other side forms forms a parallelogram the moment I, 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 I place it it has formed a parallelogram what is the reason if you have two sides which are already equal and parallel which have been ensured by shifting the other two sides automatically become equal and parallel right so so what happens i kind of shift this ahead right so i kind of shift this ahead and obviously if 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 this is making an angle of theta with this. So this vector is also making an angle theta with this. This vector is A, so is this vector. If this vector is B, this vector is B, so is this vector. This vector makes an angle of theta, theta with the horizontal. This also makes an angle of theta with the horizontal. Reason being, these two are parallel and these are corresponding angles, right? Now, now if that is the case, you can very well see that if I add A and B, what do I have to do? I should be placing them head to tail. And, and this placement is exactly that, it is head to tail, 
so the resultant of these is is this way right is this red vector whose tail lies at the tail of the first vector and whose head lies at the head of the second vector the last vector right so this technically becomes the resultant and i name it r vector right now what is my task i should be able to express r the magnitude of r in terms of the magnitudes of a and b and the angle theta between them and also the angle alpha that this r makes with one of these vectors say in this case with the vector a understand now 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 to get that i draw i draw a line perpendicular to this right so so this is 90 degrees correct now what happens now what happens let us say if this is a this is b this is c this is d this is e okay then what is the value of bc what is the length of ab first of all what is ab the length ab is nothing but a the moment i remove the the vector sign from above a vector whatever is left becomes the magnitude of it so 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 this is a vector so either you represent the magnitude by putting this absolute value or by simply this okay if a is the name of the vector okay then you remove that arrow from above it and you'll find that we have the length right so this is the length of the vector now now the length bd is what b right why because because this vector is b i remove the i remove the arrow sign over that and what i'm left with is b and that b will indicate the length of the vector the magnitude of the vector so that is b so this length is b this bd is equal to bd is equal to b right understand that this bd is equal to b now what is bc equal to bc upon bd is cos theta bc upon bd is cos theta where in triangle in triangle b c d right b c upon b d is that so b c is equal to b d cos theta b c is b d cos theta and and b d is is b so so this whole thing this whole length is b cos theta do you see that this is b cos theta now what is dc again in the same triangle in triangle bcd dc upon bd is equal to sin theta perpendicular upon opposite side upon hypotenuse so so dc is equal to bd sin theta which is nothing but b sin theta so what is this length Okay, this length is 
b sin theta right this is b sin theta now what why am i doing all this that will become clear to you if you if you just pay close attention to this fact to indicate the triangle let me make it a thicker brush if you look at this triangle you see that this is a right triangle no this triangle is a right triangle this, this angle is is 90 degrees and somehow i have i have found out i have found out its base total base length and the total length of the perpendicular isn't it what is ac ac is nothing but ab plus bc and what is ab ab is a bc is b cos theta okay and and what is is cd or dc cd is b sin theta and in triangle a c d this, this point is d right this is d in triangle a c d i'm actually i'm actually supposed to find out a d no what is a d square a d square is nothing but a c square plus c d square is that because ac is my base and this is perpendicular by pythagoras pythagoras theorem okay i i just put in the value so a plus b cos theta whole square plus b sin theta whole square right we get the point and let us try to find this out let us square it a square plus 2 ab cos theta right 2 a to b plus b square cos square theta plus b square b sin theta whole square is b square sin square theta right? and this is a square plus 2 ab cos theta plus if i take out b square it becomes cos square theta plus sin square theta what is cos square theta plus sin square theta that is equal to 1 okay that's an identity so we get a square plus 2 ab cos theta plus b square and what is my ad ad is a square plus 2 ab cos theta plus b square right root over that so so my resultant is so my resultant is ad is is my r right so length of r vector right r vector is my resultant vector if i remove again that arrow over that it becomes the length of that vector the magnitude of that vector so that means r is equal to equal to to 
a square plus 2ab cos theta plus b square. So I have got the length, the magnitude of R in terms of length of vector A, length of vector B and the angle between them. That is what we had started with, right? We had started with that very thing. So, so my resultant is that. Now let us come back to this very triangle. I also, since R is a vector, I also need its orientation. How is it oriented? Okay. What is what angle it makes with maybe either of these vectors? That too becomes pretty simple if we understand that this angle alpha that it makes alpha, right, is equal to DC upon AC, right? DC upon AC in this right triangle ACD. So 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 I am writing in triangle ACD DC. tan alpha is equal to dc okay which, which, which is the perpendicular and the base is ac so so that is dc upon ac and what is dc dc is nothing but b sine theta upon a plus B cos theta, right? This is AC and this is DC, right? So, so, so we get tan alpha. Also, the orientation of the angle. Let me let me remove it from here and write this equal to sine theta. So we get the orientation of the resultant vector in terms of the magnitude of A and B, that means A and B, which are the magnitudes of A and B, and angle theta, theta, correct, correct. So that is another result. Now, in a sense, we have defined R as a vector because now we have the orientation of it from here and the magnitude of it from here. And these are the two traits of the vector, right? The, the length and the magnitude, right? Fine. 